Live from Denver, Colorado, it's theCUBE. Covering Commvault Go 2019. Brought to you by Commvault. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Commvault Go 19 from Colorado this year. I'm Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman and we are excited to welcome a couple of new guests to theCUBE. One of them brand new to Commvault, we have Mercer Rowe, VP of Global Channels and Alliances. Mercer, welcome to Commvault and theCUBE. Thanks so much. And we've got Carmen Cerise, the third Pinky out, <laughs> GTM, Chief of Staff yeah. for Combo. You're the veteran here, you've been there for a year. A year, yes. Exactly. Yes. Guys, so much excitement in the last you know, nine months since Sanjay Merchandani took over. Uh, analysts saying, hey Combo, you, you've got to upgrade your sales, you've got to upgrade your marketing, you've got to shift gears and expand the market share. And we're seeing a lot of movement in all three of those directions. The channel is really critical for Commvault Mercer. It's responsible for uh, a significant portion of revenue. You guys have made some strategic changes there with respect to channels and alliances. First of all, before we get into that, you're brand new, brand brand new to Combo. Right, right. What attracted you to this company that's 20 years old, but as Sanjay was telling us, it's kind of like the new Commvault. Right. So, so if I look, look back at my career, in the last 10 years or so, I've been in, in IT for about 20 years, but the last 10 years or so, I've been a part of launching cloud businesses for a number of, of, of <clears throat> some up and coming and some new vendors, uh, such as VMware, IBM, SoftBank, and, and others. And a lot of that in that process, what I've been working on is helping existing customers to move their workloads into the cloud. Uh, we know that the market is evolving to a hybrid cloud type of deployment model. I mean, we can see that across, across the board with the way our customers are behaving, with the way that the cloud vendors are behaving. But that's been a challenge because of the, tech, the, the technology matching, right? Uh, figuring out how to uh, essentially put the same technology stack in the cloud as you do on prem to be able to move those apps over. I really started to look for companies that could bridge that gap and, and could really operate in a hybrid cloud scenario. Commvault is absolutely positioned perfectly for that in my mind. And so it's such an opportunity as we shift from our kind of act one as a great data protection company to a true hybrid cloud data platform or data plane. Yeah. Uh, Carmen, uh, maybe g give us a little bit of your insight as to some of those changing roles. As uh, as Mercer was just saying, right, cloud is having a huge impact. You know, we've watched you know for years the shifting role of the traditional you know VAR or you know SI or the like. Um, so bring us a little bit of insight as to what today is important to you know your go-to-market. Yeah. So what's important to our partners, especially the the VARs, is continuing to meet, be relevant with our customers, right? Change is the only constant, and it's the, the, the rate of change is just accelerating. So partners are looking for vendor partners like us to, be, to help them be relevant, to come out with the solutions that are going to be more relevant even tomorrow. And from a Commvault perspective, if you think about everything we've done from a data backup and data management perspective, We've, we've been the best in the industry, as we've just seen with Gartner and Forrester, right? So we're proud of that. But what our partners were looking for is, where are we taking this next? Where's the innovation going to come from? So when you, when you weave in things like Metallic, that now gives our partners a consumption option. So if they have customers that want to buy software as a service, they now have that option. And then when you add software-defined storage, it takes us into a completely different area. And you had asked Stuart about the cloud. When you think of cloud-native applications and you think of containerization, that's changing the way backup data and primary storage data is being managed. The lines are blurring. Now with Hedvig Software Defined Storage, we have an opportunity to come out with integrated offers to help our partners be even more successful. So from a go-to-market perspective, in the last year there's been a, a lot of transformation, mm -hmm. right? Not just in terms of leadership changes, but this big focus on ensuring that as customers' environments change in this hybrid multi-cloud world that they are living in, whether it's by design or it's by acquisition or different types of, of growth, right? Talk to us a little bit about how Commvault foundationally is set up to really make some big shifts and big bets in new routes to market. Yeah, I can take that from where we were a year ago till now and then feel free to, to expand. So, when you look at, we, we've always been a partner business, a partner friendly business. Yes. 
a significant percentage of our revenue, like north of 90%, goes through our partners. What our partners were asking for is, hey, you guys are partner friendly, but we need you to be partner driven. So when you come up with solutions, make sure they're channel ready, make sure they're partner ready, make sure we have our eyes on the market so that we're not just trying to sell software to our partners, we need to better understand their go-to-market models, how can we help them grow their business by offering a different variety, a variety of different services. So I think the evolution you've seen is a year ago, the company made significant investments on becoming partner first. So we've invested in channel leadership, partner leadership, not only at the corporate level, but also in the field. And since, we, since Sanjay came on board, as you referenced in February, that change is just continuing. So we're making our next level of investment in channel executives, in executives period, who have context about what channel is. Uh, and when you've lived in the channel, you've dealt with channel conflict, you bring that to the table, you bring that experience to the table. So I think you're seeing an evolution of us in our next phase of investments, helping our partners be successful and becoming partner first. And we've done a lot of new things with our programs that I can get into, financial incentives, rebates, uh, making it easier on our partner portal to interface with us. And we're going to continue to do that so that we're not only just the right product choice, we're the right financial choice for our partners going forward. Yeah, and, and I think to, to add to that, if you look at, if you look at our metallic launch, um, obviously the reason we work with partners is in service of our customers. Right? That's the whole reason we partner, because we want to create a better value proposition for our customers. And when, when we launched that product, in fact, some of the, a little tidbit, uh, we did a lot, the company did a lot of research, went out and talked to non, not current Commvault customers, so, so potentially new Greenfield customers, and consistently got the feedback that they wanted to buy software as a service applications like that through a partner, because they could have a conversation about their entire IT environment. So it's really exciting to be in a, in a spot where we are not only partner first, partner led, but we're in a, in a position where we know that this is the way our customers want to interact with us, that's number one. Number two is as we start to make some of these transitions into SaaS, as we move, uh, as, as we, we move into adjacencies like we're doing with, with Hedvig, it's so important to have our partners be the tip of the spear to help our customers through that journey. You know, innovation is great, but innovation also creates complexity. That's where partners help us move our customers through that journey and be successful. Yeah, we were talking to one of your launch partners uh, earlier today, and they were very excited about Metallic. On the same high, they did, they did recognize uh, that there is a significant change as to how they have to engage, you know, what part of the organization, yep. you know, it's a good thing they have a Microsoft practice that this plugs into for the O365. So bring us a little bit as to how you're helping the channel transform. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. So, as, as, um, as you can see, a lot of the partners, you can see a lot of them that are here today, have moved from being pure, say in the solution provider space, just to use as an example, have moved from being pure solution providers to also having MSP offerings or, or other kind of, kind of services offerings because they realize that customers want the flexibility of consumption economics while also uh, you know, being able to, to work with their trusted partner. So whether it's them, whether it's service providers who we want to drive into more of a, an as a service model, and obviously we're planning to release all of this technology to our service providers to allow them to, to offer Commvault based or Commvault powered services in the market, or whether it's our, our great uh, alliance partners, uh, companies like, like NetApp and Hitachi, where we have uh, OEM relationships or other kind of, of uh, very, very deep collaborative uh, relationships in the market adding some of these features and functions and capabilities as we move, as we help our customers to move into the cloud, as we help them to, uh, you know, to give them more options for these multi-cloud or hybrid deployment models, this opens up additional apertures, additional opportunities for services, for holistic end-to-end -end solutions from these partners that actually increase their ability to be relevant with the customers, but also the share wallet. I want to get your perspective, Mercer, on differentiation because partners, your partners work with a lot of your competitors. We know there's a lot of, of co-opetition, right, in technology, but what is it about some of the things that Commvault is putting in place or some ideas that you have to really differentiate how you're enabling partners, whether it's, a, we're talking about a VAR or a DISTI or all the way up to a, a global services a systems integrator that can deliver massive enterprise scale. Yeah, I, I could start with that yeah, if you're yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, it's all about listening to partners, right? Listening to what they need and what they're asking you for. Because many times a vendor becomes vendor arrogant, right? And you, you're not listening to the partners. So our partners have been clear. They said, we want 
a predictable financial model with Convol, which translates to a program that's a full year program that gives them financial incentives so they don't have to guess what we're going to do in any given month or any given quarter with some kind of spiff. So we've delivered on that. They've asked number two, they said, they've said to me over the year, and you're going to be hearing this, <laughs> is you've always had great products, please, that has to continue. That's like a ticket for entry. And we've seen that we continue to lead in that space. And then I mentioned earlier about innovation. They want to know that we're going to take them into the future. So those three things are, are, are really critical for our partners. And then the last thing they ask, ask for, which is basically a foundation across that, is field engagement. We need to be more tightly engaged with your sellers so that we go in on, on joint sales calls, that we're bringing each other opportunities. And I think with the new sales leadership we have, Ricardo de Blasio, our new CRO, our boss, knows full well how to grow businesses with partners and through partners, and it's by engaging in the field. And that's why we're going to have more people in the field so that we can engage with partners and create opportunities together. So those are kind of the four foundational elements that, that we see. Yep. Mercer, I was wondering if I, I could get your viewpoint just in general about the channel. There was a lot of fear for a number of years about you know, the cloud uh, coming in <laughs> and that readjustment. How do you think it's going? What, what's the general uh, you know, feel of the channel today and how their interaction is with you know, that ever-changing interaction with the big public clouds? You know, it, it's a great question. And I remember when we were first, uh, first launching the cloud business at, at VMware, uh, I used to go to, I, I built our channel model, but I would, I would introduce myself in the partner meetings with, hey, I, I'm from VMware Cloud, we're here to kill your business. Because there was, <laughs> there was a fear. And, and, and that fear, I think, in, in a certain way, has, has kind of dissipated as, as, customer, as, as, as the market has realized, as partners and, and most importantly customers have realized that there is not a one size fit, fits all strategy. The cloud is not the solution to all IT needs. It is certainly an important part of most customer strategy. In fact, I don't think that there are, in, <clears throat> there are many customers that don't have cloud as a part of their overall IT strategy. However, it's not the entire environment and it certainly doesn't solve all needs. So, from a general perspective, the, the savvy partners have embraced the cloud, they've embraced services, and they've looked at it as a holistic part of, of how they do business with their, their end customers. Because as we think about, you know, to the last question, as we think about partner profitability, I think about it in two main vectors. There's margin, field engagement, revenue, and so forth, which is very, you know, this is the, the, the financial element of working with a partner like Commvault to, to make money. And, and that's obviously a very important part, and that's something we will continue to invest in programs and, and so forth. To, to support our partners to be profitable working with Commvault, but the other is in the practices, in how they build services, and how they build end-to-end -end solutions, uh, which is another uh, tidbit on, um, on Metallic that uh, some, some people uh, picked up on was that we've released the, uh, the telemetry APIs, meaning that partners who are working with Metallic can see exactly what their customers are using. How, do, how are they growing? Oh, uh, they all of a sudden backed up a, a new workload. Hey, maybe they have a new project. Maybe I should call them. So I'm not waiting until renewal. I'm not waiting until these sort of forcing events to have an opportunity to place a call into my, my customer and say, hey, I noticed you're doing something new. How can I help? Yep. That insight, so, and, and sorry, Carmen, yep. we were talking about that a little bit earlier, I think with maybe with Rob Kalustian. That was really interesting because it really, it changes the word partner, yes. right? It can, yeah. because if they're actually able to follow along and maybe even make some educated predictions or suggestions to the customer, then the customer feels like, okay, you're not only selling me this, you're actually helping me optimize my deployment, learn from it, and plan for what sucks. So that, that definition of partner changes for the better. And I think the whole SaaS model is like the next step beyond cloud. So sir, you're asking about cloud. Very briefly, the way I've seen it over the last probably seven to nine years is I had billion dollar VARs tell me nine years ago, don't ever try to come in here and sell me a multi-tenant cloud service because I'm selling hardware. That moved to, hey, you know what? We see the customers changing. I was with a service provider, why don't you come help us? And then a couple years later they said, you know what? We're kind of building our own service now, so we, we don't need your services anymore. So in a few, you know, three to five years, they went from stay out, I'm never going to sell a multi-tenant service, to quickly, real, well maybe not so quickly, some not as quick <laughs> as others, uh, realize that they have, to, they have to get there. I think SaaS is like the next, the next step beyond that. 
Well, in this business, I think if that teaches anybody anything, it's never say never, That's right? right? Yes. That's right. Well, yes. Guys, thank you so much for joining Stu and me, sharing us, yes. sharing with us how things are really transforming here, but also what you're doing for Global Alliances and Channel to really catalyze Commvault's business. We appreciate it and we say best of luck in so as much. you enter week three. Yes. <laughs> or day three. <laughs> day three, day One three. One of those things. Yes. Yes. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you very Thanks. much. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Commvault Go 19.